When I got into the sport, and especially as I progressed and I became a veteran in the sport, I didn't want to be one of those guys that just took loss after loss after loss, and then they were no longer a version of, of the fighter that they used to be. And you know, everybody's just begging them to retire. I wanted to go out on top. I wanted to go out with a win. It was very important to me. Through my amateur career, through wrestling, all those big steps ended on losses. My high school career ended on a loss. My college career, even though I had a great college career, I was an All-American, it ended with a loss. So it was important to leave my athletic career with a win coming out of the UFC. It was just a great feeling to do it against a tough guy like I had, Bill Algio, and we, we won fight of the night. Walking out of that cage, I feel like with that fight, I left everything I had left in there. After retiring a year ago, owning this gym in general helps me scratch that itch. You saw me jump in there at, in BJJ class today and roll with a bunch of the guys. So just staying active in that way here in the gym, like that's what I live for. Like I love being in the gym, I love training, I love sweating. And these guys are constantly pushing me every time that I roll. You know, everybody wants to tap me out, everybody wants to land a punch on me. He uh, he still works out like crazy, you know, being retired, but you can tell he's, he's getting into that coaching role. But, you know, he's still a lion, man. Once he puts the gloves on and he trains with you, it's like, it's like he hasn't stopped, you know? You don't feel like he's retired. But I'm happy right now. I, I, I love being in the gym. I love training guys. I love coaching. I love being in their corners for fights. I just feel like this is what I was born to do. You know, I was born to fight. And, and now that I'm done fighting, I have to give it back to the, to the new guys that are coming up. My name is uh, Jalen Gibson. Um, I'm 20 years old and I've been training under Ricardo for about two and a half years. Man, it, it's very inspiring working with a guy that's fought Josie L, one of the greatest guys, and fought for the title. I'm a personal assistant. Um, I help uh, kids with autism, and um, I've been working there for about a year, and I, I'm really liking that. I'm, I'm a very quiet person. Like, outside, I'm very shy. Like, when I go in there, I just know when to switch it on. I'm starting off with kickboxing right now, just to get my feet wet with the striking. Yeah, man, my goal, yeah, like, obviously, like, following his footsteps you know, fighting professionally and just building that confidence. That's the main thing. My approach to the fighters depends on where they're at. If they're on the amateur level, it's hard to gather film on their opponents because everybody at the amateur level, if it's their debut, nobody has a fight, we, we tend to match them up evenly. So in those cases, I try and work towards their attributes and get them feeling very good about themselves as a fighter and to improve their skills uh, and instead of training specifically for a person. Well, I have some fighters on the professional level. For those guys, we definitely research their opponents, find out their tendencies, figure out the chinks in their armor, work at those, but then we're also building our fighters up at the same time too. We tend to, uh, to tell them, you know, don't worry about what your opponent's gonna do to you, let them worry about what you're gonna do to them. So coming from a fighting background, having me in their corner and knowing that, that I believe in them, it helps them mentally and helps them prepare and will help them perform better on fight night. Ricardo is one of those rare breeds where you can be one of the best fighters in the entire world, literally title contender in the highest organization in the sport, but also an amazing coach. It's hard to even say which he's better at, and that's a testament to his coaching ability, right? He understands what these guys need to do. He understands what these folks are going up against. Give it all you got out there, all right? Be mean. 99% of the work was done before tonight. And then we go out and showcase that. Yeah. I told my squad we gonna make it out. 
Throw that right head kick off the cross and switch it up. Go to his body too. Throw a couple to the head and then butt right to the body. You're doing good. You look good. All right, just be careful slipping around here. To the body now, Jay. Yes! Very nice. You got the speed advantage, everything. You see those kicks coming. When you throw a high kick, he comes back with it. Sweep that leg out as he's kicking, okay? Just have hands up, lean over, sweep that leg out. You see it coming. Come on, Jay. Cut kick. Keep him when he walks straight into you. Keep him when he walks straight into you. Ladies and gentlemen, for your winner by unanimous decision, the blue corner. We were like, he was greasing me up. He's like, hey. Show him that he, he came straight out of a comic book. That's from uh, Enter the Dragon. So, I, yeah. It's like, be like Bruce Leroy. You know, it's amazing to me how little encouragement people get and how little of encouragement is necessary to build people up. So, whether that's in defeat or victory, we're super proud of our folks and it takes a tremendous amount of courage and a lot of time and effort to be able to step out into that cage. about like when you were back in school and you had to give like a huge presentation that you worked on so hard for so long you know leading up to it you get those butterflies in your stomach like I hope I do this well I, I hope I do everything right it's that multiplied times a hundred because you know you're, you're worried about getting punched in the face there are a lot of things that could happen to you in a fight and it's just the unknown anything can happen in a fight you know that's why everybody loves the sport so much because you never know who's going to win, who's going to lose. You know, you, you talk about, you see underdogs, you see people that are favored in fights, and it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, so the big unknown is, is kind of what gives you those butterflies in your stomach. And uh, when it's go time, no matter how many nerves you have, once you get in that locker room and you start moving around, you see the real fighters, they just turn a switch and they get into a zone, and the nerves just leave you, and then you're just in this state of readiness. All the combat sports I did tonight was the best one. I felt really good and like my confidence, I could tell my confidence improved a lot because I didn't hold back, you know, I was just being free. Being a fighter turned to coach, I get those same butterflies that I got when I was going in the cage myself. You know, I'm deeply invested in these guys, I care about all of them, I want them to do well, so it's also, it's almost like I'm stepping in that ring with them. So I get almost the same fight nerves that I got when I was fighting. That definitely will, will keep me on the coaching side instead of wanting to venture back to fighting. The one thing I regret from retiring was retiring during COVID and ha having to retire 
in an arena and with no fans. So that was something that I wish I could take back and redo. But you know, if, if you're looking for the 100% perfect retirement, that's not gonna come along, especially in the fight game. There's nothing like walking out to the octagon with your song playing and 20,000 fans screaming your name, trying to slap your hand or, or the roar of the crowd when you finish a fight. Um, luckily, I, I experienced it many times and it's something that I'll cherish for the rest of my life.